Hello everybody, John Bornstein here, and this is Cable Lane. I wanna thank you for tuning in again. We're continuing in our series of how to have strong, God-honoring marriages. And today we wanna to talk about how we're better together. It seems like it should be a really a common sense thing, that we'll be better together. But there are those times where we're tested, where we think, you know, it would just be better off if I didn't have to deal with this anymore. This person is challenging me in every way. I don't want to invest in this anymore. I would be better off single. Well, that's exactly the opposite of what we want you to think about here today, that God has designed your marriage. If you're in marriage, this is not something that you've done on your own accord. God has purposed this. He has designed this, and your marriage represents Christ and His church. It's a very important assignment, after all, to then be selfless in service to the other. Now, we've been talking about that over the past few weeks. Today, I want to just encourage you a little bit more to stay the course, to fight for your marriage, to persevere and learn endurance, because often we want to give up. As soon as adversity comes our way, as soon as it feels like communication is struggling, we just want to throw in the towel on this thing called marriage, and may it never be. Here's a picture that someone sent me. I love this picture. Never give up. What an inspiring, encouraging little image there. But I think we all need to strap on our helmet sometimes and persevere, push through whatever obstacles that we're facing. You know, Scripture gives us a lot about this. In fact, the Apostle Paul talked about that we are to be immovable. Listen to these powerful words. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, so often we are just willing to, well, just give up. And that's not the attitude we need to have. We need to be immovable, constantly looking to how we can serve God faithfully today. And often our spouse is the recipient of that. That might be the very first person you see today. So you need to think about this as your mission field. How can I not only serve them, but be a selfless servant in meeting their needs? Now, a few stories come to mind here. Uh, I remember the story about some young boys who were out shoveling driveways. Now, I used to earn a dollar or two doing that back in my younger days. Now I find myself doing it because it's the right thing to do. But back in the day when I was a child, a teenager, in fact, even maybe around 12 years of age, I would walk through the neighborhood and I would shovel driveways. And it was amazing how many people would throw me a few bucks for helping them out. Well, there's a story of a couple boys who were walking a neighborhood and they likewise were looking to make a few dollars. This man was shoveling his driveway. He's about halfway finished through the driveway and the boys come up to him and say, hey, mister, two dollars and we'll finish your driveway. And the man looked at him puzzled and said, well, I've almost got it finished, but thanks anyway. Why would you ask me to finish my driveway? And he said, well, that's how we make most of our money is if people get about halfway through and then feel like quitting. So they give us a couple bucks and we finish the driveway. Well, so often in life, that's what we're surrounded by, are people who often wanna throw in the towel and not recognizing this beautiful thing called marriage that is designed to challenge us, strengthen us, and put us through sometimes the refiner's fire to purge out all the selfishness in our own lives. God has a great design even in marriage. And I would like to encourage you with this powerful scripture from Ecclesiastes, and it doesn't just apply to your marriage partner, but maybe somebody in your sphere of influence who could use a little encouragement today. Maybe their marriage is going through a difficulty. Maybe it's somebody you don't even know yet. But listen to these powerful words from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I think about the power of the Holy Spirit with us because if we see here a threefold cord is not easily broken. What's the third cord? Well, you're not alone in your marriage. In fact, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So there is a third party involved that strengthens and equips our marriages to be all that it should be before Almighty God. So here's three things I want you to consider, not just how you can be a better spouse, but as you go out of your way to look and encourage other marriages around you, I want you to think about these three things. Number one, pray and ask the Lord to lead you to someone who needs some encouragement. 
Number two, look for unrealized potential in people around you, maybe individuals who just need some encouragement today, and then take the time to make an investment in the life of someone who needs empowerment. You see, if you've been in marriage for a long time and you've learned a lot, this may be a season in your life where you need to go and pour in some seeds of truth and blessing and encouragement into the marriages around you. So I wanna encourage you today, it's not just about your marriage, it's about how we can impact all the marriages around us today. May they all be strengthened to the glory of the Lord. I hope you've been encouraged today. God bless you, my friends. Take care.